Hey everybody, Jason here again with the GDT Basics video question line, and today's topic is the repetitive pattern of features and datums. So the question that was submitted was rather long, but I've summarized it here, and the main goal of the question is that I have a question on how to properly use localized datums. I've got a part with datum A and datum B, in other words, a datum reference frame, where on three faces of this part, there's the same set of cutouts. So the orientation of the cutouts on each face are different with respect to the datum reference frame, but the size of the three circles are the same. And the question goes on to ask, how is it best to control this repetitive pattern of cutouts? Uh, and there's actually a tool within the standard uh, ASME Y14.5 that allows us to control the location of uh, features around one main feature individually. So Let's take a look at this drawing here. Now I've taken the sample drawing these students submitted uh, and redrawn it in SOLIDWORKS to have a couple of things to talk about here. But we can see that we have a repetitive pattern of cutouts on multiple faces and we have a stable datum reference frame A, B, and C to work with. Uh, again, now this is not a complete drawing, uh, so there's a lot of things missing, but as far as dimensioning and controlling the location of these cutouts and the main holes and the best methodology, this drawing will be sufficient for us to have a conversation around this topic. So let's take a look at the drawing, and with any drawing, the best place to start is to take a look at the datum features and see how they're controlled together and what sort of datum reference frame they complete. So we see datum feature A identified right here as this top surface. So this top surface right here is datum feature A. And then we can also see datum feature B identified as this back surface over here. So this surface right here is datum feature B. So we can identify that one there. And then C is this surface right here identified right here as well. So datum feature C is this surface. So now that we have the three datum features identified, we can see that we can control all six degrees of freedom using just A, B, and C. Now we can use them in the order A, B, and C. We can reorder them if we'd like to. There's a lot of discussion that we can have around the datum reference frame and the datum order precedence that would apply to how we control these features. We won't be going over that topic necessarily in this video. It would be a rather long video and the conversation around datums uh, does get naturally deep to begin with. So we're going to avoid that. Just assume that A, B, and C is more than enough to control all the six degrees of freedom for all of these features. And in fact, we can see that in detail A. We are controlling the location of these large holes. So this large hole, this large hole, this one, all of these large holes are held with respect to A, B, and C with a diametric tolerance zone of 60 thousandths. Now that might mean something different for these three holes versus these three holes, um, but nonetheless we can control them to all A, B, and C. Again, I'm not going to get into deep details as to the differences of maybe using B, A, C for one set of three or A, B, C for the other set of three. That would be a deeper conversation here, but we are controlling the location and orientation of all six of these holes. Now, what's interesting is we've added datum feature D. We've identified the large hole as datum feature D. And what we've added is this six times individually after the datum feature symbol. That means that individually we've created six separate datum Ds. It might be D1, D2, and so on and so forth for all of these. And when you're inspecting this, it'd be very important to make sure that you've labeled them as such. We have various D datums. And what we're gonna utilize is individually D1 is to locate the location for these two holes. D2 is to locate these two holes. And so we can see that here in the location of our smaller holes, we're controlling the position diametrically of 10 thousandths with respect to just D. And now when we've done that, we've controlled the location of these two holes with respect to the larger hole that they should be located around. Now, since we have two times here, it is creating a pattern and that creates a simultaneous requirement between these two. So while this doesn't clock the two holes with respect to this circle, it does control the location of each hole 180 degrees from each other as a pattern. So we are controlling not only the location away from the center hole, right, the radial distance between these two, but we're also controlling the location of this hole with respect to this hole because it's a pattern of two. So as a pattern, those holes could exist here or they could exist here. 
And again, the rotation around this hole is not being controlled here, but we are making sure to locate them with respect to the center of that hole. And we're gonna do this for six instances. And technically this detail should be six times detail A to be uh, official, so we know that this detail happens in six different locations. That can easily identify to us that we would have to check the location of the pattern of two holes with respect to the one that they're centered around individually. So the key here is to use individually. Six times individually, we're creating six separate datum Ds, and we're gonna check six separate patterns of two to their respective datum D. Now, if you want to clock these two holes with respect to something, you would need something to clock them to. So if there was some sort of cutout or keyway that we could then clock and add another individual datum to, we could add that to our datum reference frame. But in this scenario, there's not. So there's nothing about this feature that can stop that rotation. However, if you want these holes to be generally located or rotated in the same way on all of these features, we can do one additional step. So let's take a look at this next drawing here and see what we've added for control. Now you're gonna see two feature control frames controlling the position of these two holes. The first one is controlling the position of these two holes to A, B, and C, just like we saw down here controlling the larger hole. We can control the six degrees of freedom. Again, the conversation around datums and datum order precedents can go a lot deeper and you might select a different datum reference frame depending on the face that these holes originate from if you have holes on multiple separate faces. Uh, but again, we're gonna avoid that conversation for the sake of time here. But let's say we do wanna control the location of these holes uh, to a larger tolerance zone. That large tolerance zone allows the holes to deviate quite a bit in a lot of direction with respect to A, B, and C. So we're controlling them in other words, we're clocking them uh, to a large tolerance zone, but we're still maintaining that tight control to the individual datum D. So in other words, we still need to control here. So if we had an overlapping tolerance or an overlapping area where these holes could exist, the large tolerance zone is gonna allow them to, to move quite a bit, right? It can be up here, and this one could be maybe down here. Um, but what we're saying is six times individually, uh, also, as a pattern, those holes need to be located from each other as well as located from the datum. So if they're going to move with respect to each other and datum D, they need to do so appropriately within this tolerance. But now they could exist here and here or there and there, and they can have a little bit of freedom but still be controlled in that rotation as opposed to the previous example where it was completely uncontrolled in rotation. Now, if you're asking yourself which decision is best, can I leave it uncontrolled? Can I leave it free in movement? The decision is up to you as a designer. If you can allow these holes to exist like this, and then maybe these twins, two ones to exist over here, or you trust your manufacturing department that they're going to uh, laser cut this or water jet this and close enough is good enough for you, right? No one has to check the orientation of these two holes with respect to the larger part, as much as you're just more concerned that the location of these two holes with respect to the individual datums that you've identified here is the one that is the most important to make sure it's a functional pattern of holes. Uh, more often than not, just making sure that the understanding in manufacturing is that you don't do something wild and crazy for these two holes, and then these two holes are over here. Uh, visually, that just kind of looks jarring. Even though it might function, uh, you can have sort of a you know conversation as to what level of tolerance is necessary. But again, as designers, we should only be putting the tolerances on the drawing that are completely necessary. Uh, the argument can be made that this is a functional requirement. If this is beyond this uh, set of tolerances and specifications for the position of these two holes with respect to their individual locations, uh, that's a functional issue. Uh, this one might be more of a visual issue. If they're, you know, if this set looks like this and this set looks like this, eh, it might look a little bit bad, right? So maybe we need that tolerance. Maybe we don't. Uh, deeper conversation there, but again, hopefully this all kind of sheds some light on how to control the repetitive pattern of features with respect to a more central datum. Uh, again, repeating that using the detail and six times individually. So hopefully that answers your question and thanks for submitting. Our goal is to be your best source for GDNT information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GDNT on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. 
subscribe to our GD&T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GD&T and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles